Hello. In this chapter, we have been investigating systems of equations. And in this topic, we extend that to systems of inequalities. Uh, so the first part, uh, what we're going to do is just kind of reiterate how mathematics and English are connected with simple examples of linear inequalities kind of from algebra one. And then we're going to extend that pretty quickly. So uh, if you need to have your notes out, should say something about graphing systems of inequalities as the title of this section. So the lead in, we're just going to do this out loud. Uh, describe what the equation or inequality is saying. The first one is done as an example. So when we say the equation y equals 3x minus 4, what we really mean is we want all of the points that are exactly on the line y equals 3x minus 4. That's what an equation is. When you plot all the points, those are all the points that are on the line. If I read this uh, off mathematically, it says y is greater than 3x minus 4. What we mean, though, is we want all the points that are above y equals 3x minus 4, because we want all the points that are greater than. If I have less than, I want all the points that are below the line y equals 3x minus 4. Now when we have the combination, if I say y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 4, I want all of the points that are on or above y equals 3x minus 4. And likewise, if I have less than or equal to, it means I want all of the points that are on or below y equals 3x minus 4. That's how the mathematics and the English are connected. Now, we can actually start with uh, some examples. So the steps for graphing an inequality are fairly simple. We just need to be able to recall the variety of different graphs that we might have. So step one is going to be to graph the boundary line. It will be solid if it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, and it'll be dashed if it's less than or greater than with no equal to part. It's the two-dimensional version of open and closed circles. Step two, then, is to shade the appropriate side of the line or the boundary line. It doesn't always have to be a straight line. You'll shade above if it's greater than, and you'll shade below if it has a less than statement. If you're struggling about with what means above or below, you can always use a test point. Usually 0, 0 is good. If the test point is true, then you shade the region that includes that test point. If it is false, then you shade the other region. If 0, 0 is on one of your boundary lines, then you're going to need to check, check another point. Maybe try 1, 1 is usually a fairly simple one to try. So we're going to start with an example from Algebra 1, and we're going to graph the following system of linear inequality. So our boundary lines are going to be lines. The first one is a line in the form y equals mx plus b. So you should be able to plot the y-intercept and use the slope to get the boundary line. So I'll do this one in blue just to be able to talk about uh, the two specific boundary lines. I'd start at 1. The slope is negative 2, then right 3 because it's negative 2 over 3. Likewise, you could go left 3 and up 2 and that would be the same. Since this is not an equal to, I'm going to have a dashed boundary line. Then I'm going to do the boundary line for the other one. I'm going to do this in red. This is a vertical line at 4 because I need an x-intercept of 4. So the x-intercept of 4 is right here. It's a vertical line and it's solid. Looks like this. Now I want to shade in the points that satisfy both. The first one is greater than. So I should know I'm going to be shading up somewhere up here. If you don't know what greater than means, I'm going to show example of testing 0, 0 just once. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you know what greater than would mean. So if I test 0, 0, if I put 0 in for y and I put 0 in 4x, I end up whoa, with the statement, sorry, it should be 0 in there for x. I end up with a statement 0 is greater than 1. That is false. So that means 0, 0 is not going to be in the solution region for the blue one which means I need a shade above it so for the blue. Uh, if you want, we can even use like, so if you look, when you graph these, it cuts it into four regions. I'll call them A, uh, B, C, and D. I need to be above the blue line. So which ones are above the blue? We just talked about that'd be A and B. I also need to be to the left of this red line because it says less than, and the regions that do that would be D and A. And the only one that does both is A. So that is where the solution region would be. You'll also hear it called the feasible region. But those are where your solutions are. If you pick any point in that shaded in region, it will make both statements true. One. It's going to be where we have to define our own and then graph it. So it says a retiree with no more than $15,000 to invest is going to diversify into two 
investments. There's going to be high risk and high return and low risk and low return. At least $2,000 needs to be in high risk. Also, the amount in low risk should be at least three times that of high risk in order to comply. Graph and select an appropriate amount. So to start, we need to define our variables. The two things we're keeping track of are dollars in high risk and dollars in low risk. Now I need to go through and find all of my constraints is what they were called. So as it, it says a retiree with no more than $15,000 to invest in the two types of investments. That means if I add up however much I have in high risk plus however much I have in low risk, it needs to be less than or equal to 15000 because it says I have no more than $15,000 to spend. If I graph that, you know, you can either use intercepts. You'll notice that if x is 0, y has to be 15,000. If y is 0, x has to be 15,000. So you know that the intercepts are going to be at 15,000 and 15,000. If you don't remember how to use intercepts to graph, you can always solve for y, and you would get less than or equal to negative x plus 15,000. So you'd start at 15,000 and then go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. Keep doing that until you've got to the other axis. And then you have your boundary line. So there's my boundary line for that one. Next statement says, at least $2,000 needs to be in high risk. So that means the amount in high risk, x, needs to be greater than or equal to $2,000. That's a vertical line. We just did an example of that. These are going off by 2,000. So graphing right here, there's my boundary line. I'm going to need to be to the right of that. Last statement says, the amount in low risk should be at least three times that of high risk. So low risk, if it says at least, that means greater than or equal to three times however much is in high risk. So they want more in low risk to not have as risky of investments. So to graph that, it's 3x plus 0. The y-intercept is 0. Then you go up 1, 2, 3, and write 1. 1, 2, 3, and write 1. 1, 2, 3, and write 1. So your boundary line will look, oops, look something like that. Okay. Now I need to know where the solution region is going to be. So I need to be below the green, to the right of the purple, and above the blue. And if you think about those statements, the only one that does all of that, the only region, whoa, would be the region right in here. That is going to be your solution region. So any point in there would make a solution. So there's your solutions. The last part of the direction said graph it and then select an appropriate amount. So right here would be a solution. That looks to me it would be about 3000 in high risk, 10000 in low risk. So $3,000 in high risk and ten thousand dollars in low risk would make all of those true you'll see that if you add those together they're less than fifteen thousand the amount in high risk is more than two thousand and the amount in low is more than three times the amount in high if you multiply the high by three you get nine thousand and ten thousand is more than that so that point right there of 3,000, well, let's just use zeros, 3,000, 10,000 is a solution. So there you go, an example of applying uh, a system of inequalities. We use it when we're trying to do a constraint. And it give you a chance to try to graph these. So graph the following system and then determine whether 6, 2 is a solution to the system. If you're at home and then you try on a separate sheet of paper in class, pull out the whiteboard, Use the graph board on the back and then graph these three boundary lines and then determine where the solution region is going to be. And then the last part is test whether 6-2 is going to be a solution to the system. So pause the video now, unpause it after maybe two minutes and you've had a chance to try it. Okay, when you graph all three, the solution region 
looks like this. It's shaded in this very, very dark purple. So you'll notice 6, 2 is not a solution. Uh, you'll, we can check it algebraically, too. If I put 6 in for x and 2 in for y into all of these, you'll see it will fail at least one of them. So if I put it in the first one for y, 2 is less than 5. It works for that. On this one, if I put 6 in there, 6 is bigger than 1. That works. But the last one's going to fail. If I put 6 in there for x and 2 in there for y, I'm going to get a false statement. So 2 in there for y and 6 in there for x. Let's see why. I end up getting 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, and 2 is not greater than or equal to 3. So it fails the last one. That's why I saw it wasn't going to be in my solution region. So you can check graphically. You can also check algebraically. Now we're going to kind of expand it into the real college algebra portion, uh, you know, pushing it into the extended version of the course. They're going to take this idea now, and we're going to be graphing our boundaries, but our boundaries aren't always going to be lines. Sometimes they will be, but they might include one of the following three other types of graphs. So they assume that you know all of these graphs in this section. So I'm going to give you like a summary table or like a cheat sheet or a toolbox for all of the different graphs. So you obviously know lines are y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. For exponentials, the equation looks like y equals a times b to the x. Your x is in your exponent. You're doing repeated multiplication. a is your y-intercept. b is your multiplication factor. We also call it the growth factor. Quadratics, they'll only do vertical shifts ones, ones that move up and down. They'll look like y equals x squared plus c. And the last one, they assume that you know how to graph are circles. You get x minus h parenthesis squared plus y minus k parenthesis squared equals r squared. x and y are your variables. h and k are actually the coordinates of the center. They tell you how much it's been shifted left or right and up and down. They're always going to be opposite of the sign, though, very similar to how you've always seen it be opposite of the sign for x in parentheses. Well, because the y is now an input as well in parentheses, it will be opposite of the sign as well. So here, when we have minus h, the center is actually at positive h. When you have minus k, it's past k. Your center is going to be at a positive k. The radius is actually you have to take the square root of this number, because the number over here is r squared. So if they gave you 36 over here, for example, then your radius would actually be the square root of 6, which is 6 as shown right here. So there's your summary sheet. Now we're going to use these. So it asked me to graph the following. The first one is a quadratic. We'll do this one in red. The y-intercept is down here at negative 4. Now it's a quadratic, which means if I go to the right 1, 1 squared is 1, so I only go up 1. If I go right 2, 2 squared is 4, so I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, because it's a square function. If I go to the right 3, 3 squared is 9, so i got to go up 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or you could plug points in if you want to. Plug 1 in for x. 1 squared minus 4 is negative 3. Plug 2 in for x. 2 squared minus 4 is 0. Plug 3 in for x. 3 squared minus 4. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. That's why you see these points. Once you have these points, you actually have their mirror images on the other side because a parabola is symmetric. <coughs> So I end up with the following boundary. The next one I'm going to do, this one's a line. It starts at negative 2, and the slope is a positive 1. So I go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And there is this one's boundary line. This one is dashed, though. I should have made sure I did that for the other ones. Let's go back and check. For, I'm graphing these. Yes, I did. Okay, we're good. Just wanted to make sure. So we've got a solid line for the red and a dashed line for the blue. <clears throat> now, it says I need to be greater than for the red. So you can test if you don't know. If you test 0, 0, put 0 in for y and 0 in for x, you'll find that you get the statement 0 is greater than negative 4, which is true. So greater than for the parabola is actually going to mean inside of it here. So anything going up that way is going to be greater than. So inside of this bowl. Now I need to be also less than the blue in the region that does that. Well, red and blue make purple, so you're getting a little bit of an art class lesson as well. It'd be in here. This is where the solution region would be. Any point in this purple region would make both statements true. So there's where your solution region would be. There's the final answer. And try another one. This one's with an exponential, and this one's going to be a circle. Do the exponential first. This is really... Let's do it down here. This is really y is less than 1 times 2 to the x. 
Here the y intercept is 0, 1. And you're multiplying by 2. So we start at 0, 1. Now, if you take 1 and multiply by 2, then you'll be at 2. If you take 2 and multiply by 2, you'd be at 4. If you took 3 and multiply by 2, you'd be all the way up here at like 8. So it'd be way up there. If going to the right is multiply by 2, backward, it is the opposite. Divide by 2. So at negative 1, you'd be at a half, then a quarter, and an eighth. And you get the idea. So the boundary for this one, and it's dashed, it's going to look something like that. Now, the second one in blue, this is a circle. Remember I said that these numbers are always going to be opposite of where the circle is actually located. This is actually past a negative one. So this one right here. So I should have probably said this is an exponential in red. The blue one is going to be a circle. What do we know? We know its center is past negative 1. So at negative 1 for x past 2, positive 2 for y. So its center is at negative 1, 2. Its radius, if you recall, the equation was always r squared here, and r squared is equal to 9. So in order to find the radius, we know r squared is equal to 9, which if I take then the square root of each side, I get that the radius is 3. So how do I use that? Well, the radius is 3, so I got 1, 2, 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3 up, 1, 2, 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3 down, and then you do your best to draw a circle. I actually have a tool for that, so I can do it very precisely. It looks something like that. See if it'll allow me to make it a nice blue. There we go. Now the last, it says I need to be below the exponential, so anywhere down here. And I need to be inside. Less than means inside for a circle. You could test 0, 0 if you wanted to as well. So I need to be below the exponential. And I need to be inside of the circle. In that solution region, it would be right in here. So these are all the points that are below the exponential. And inside of the circle. Last one. Then I believe I'm going to have you try, and that'll be it. Last two are, these are just two circles, right? It looks like, if I were to rewrite these, it looks like x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 16. That's that one. This one again would be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 9. So this one's going to have a center is at 0, 0. And the radius will equal the square root of 16, which is 4. So start at 0, 0. And then it has a radius of 4. So go out there to 4. This one in red. This one's blue. Same idea. It just has a radius of 3. So center is at, center is at 0, 0 as well. Radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. Something like that. Now I need to shade the region. So this says greater than for the red. So I need to be outside of the red and then less than for the blue one would be inside of the blue. And then you need to ask yourself, are there any points that are outside the red and inside the blue? And there aren't. So this is a no solution since there are no points that satisfy both conditions at the same time. You would say there are no points that are both outside, that's what we mean by greater than first circles outside, the red circle and inside the blue circle. That's why you would say your final answer is no solution. There you go. I'm going to give you a chance to try ones just like these. <coughs> 
you can either try it on your whiteboard or on a separate sheet of paper. First one's a circle. Second one, this is actually a pair of lines. You could write these two separately. You could write this as uh, 0 is less than x, which means that x has to be bigger than 0, and x is less than 2. So these are actually a pair of lines. It says that your x has to be between 0 and 2. And the last one's another line. So you have a circle and three lines to graph, and then shade where the solution region would be. So pause the video now for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. Unpause it once everyone's had a chance to try and wants to check their work. Okay, here you go. Here's what you should have got. Here is the circle. Circle is centered at 1, negative 2, which is right here. You need to be in between 0 and 2 for x. The x's are shown right here in purple, so these are purple. The circle was done in black. So black, purple, and then your horizontal. On all these, are uh, the vert all the lines are dashed because none of them had equal to. You need to be greater than above the blue line. And the solution region would be shown in yellow there. That is it. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good day.